Hi, I'm Stefan. I'm a network and wireless engineer at Johannes Kepler University in Austria. And uh, the wireless access network is now the biggest network in many organizations. It exceeds the wired network, the data center network, so you need to take care of your layer three. It's not just layer one and layer two, you need to take care of, layer, of your layer three. So my advice is, okay. My advice is turn off IPv4, just shut it down. Nobody needs this, it's legacy, blah, just go away with it. So thank you for your time and I hope you've learned something. <laughs> What? what was that? You, you have legacy devices on your network? Ooh, yeah, mm, that's, that's bad. Well, you, you, you need to access IPv4 only sites? Yeah, that's a pickle. So maybe we should uh, rename this talk and say, turn off IPv4 on your wireless LAN with an asterisk attached and say, mostly. Because this mostly is one new thing, cool thing of technology. And uh, really short, how did we get here? Uh, if you wonder about if you should care about IPv6, I don't get into that. Just watch John Kilpatrick's great talk. Uh, spoiler alert, yes, you should care. And uh, the fact is IP addresses run out, and that sucks. So our goal should be IPv6 only worldwide. And yeah, we will not get there any time soon. So this will take a while. So uh, for now, uh, we run IPv4, IPv6 dual stack, and it works great. I hope you're all running dual stack. Uh, I've been running dual stack on my main SSID for 15 years now, and people are connecting with IPv6 to all kinds of services. They don't even know that they have an IPv6 address. But the problem with dual stack is you give every client an IPv4 and an IPv6 address. So we have not yet saved a single IPv4 address. It's just double. So we need something in between here. So what do we do? Uh, we, you could just say, yeah, just do IPv6 only. It's not really an issue. I yeah, have fun not accessing these sites. These are some of the top sites that are uh, IPv4 only still. Google is doing a great job. Facebook is doing a great job. All this Instagram and all this YouTube stuff is going over IPv6, but these are IPv4 only sites. So there's this uh, thing, NAT64, DNS64. Uh, you have an IPv6 only client, and instead of a DNS server, you have a DNS64 server and a NAT64 gateway. So what this does is, uh, if you want to get to an uh, IPv4 only site, like the WLPC.com, uh, the name server tries to resolve that and gets back an IPv4 address. So uh, for example, 20, 30, 40, 50. And the DNS64 server rewrites that uh, and puts the address of the NET64 gateway in front. So we have the address of the NET64 gateway, and this stuff behind that is 20, 30, 40, 50 in hexadecimal. So the client thinks, oh yeah, great, that's an IPv6 address, and connects to the NET gateway, and the NET gateway translates. So you can reach the IPv4 only site. Yeah, that's not complicated at all, right? And I'm sure there are no issues with that, like, uh, what about IPv4 literals? If you enter an IP address, this never gets to a DNS server, so it just doesn't work. What about old software that just opens an IPv4 socket? Never hits any server, so you just can't connect. Uh, what about old devices and microcontrollers? If you control all the devices, I'm sure you can deal with that, but in BYOD, do you know every device? What about disabled IPv6? Support telling people to disable IPv6. Raise your hand if you ever come across an article uh, that uh, wireless troubleshooting point six is disable IPv6, it might work better. So IPv6 mostly to the rescue, it's really named like that. So what is IPv6 mostly? This is not one thing. IPv6 mostly are three things combined. Uh, the RFC for 464XLAT, uh, IPv6 only preferred option for DHCP, and uh, PREF64 in route advertisements. So these three things work together. Uh, but what does this mean? Uh, the first one means let the client operating system do the translation from four to six. So we don't give this off to, a, to another server, but the client decides to make this tr first translation. So what does this gain us? IPv4 literals and IPv4 sockets work because the client operating system sees this program wants to connect an IPv4 address and the client translate itself. The second one, let the client decide if he wants to run IPv6 only. 
So if it doesn't want to do it, it doesn't do it. The gain is we do not give an IPv4 address to a client that does not want it. And the third thing is tell the client the location of the NAT64 prefix. Why would we do that? Let's remove DNS64, because if the client is doing the translation, why do we need this DNS64 server? Just tell the client where to send his stuff and off we go. So how does this look with a client that supports it? We have a client and he sends uh, first time on the wireless network. What does he do? He does a DHCP request. And he sets option 108 in this DHCP request and this means I would be fine doing IPv6 only. And the server responds with option 108. You can do IPv6 only. So the client stops the DHCP process because he says, why should I do this? I don't want to. He receives uh, IPv6 prefix uh, with the NAT64 gateway in it. And the client says, great, I start my CLAT. This is the address translation on the client. And this enables IPv4 and everything works. But what if it doesn't support it? You just run through the DHCP door. The client gets an IPv4 address and he receives the prefix for IPv6, has an IPv6 address, and runs dual stack. And what if he has IPv6 shut down? It happens the same. He gets an IPv4 address, but he ignores the IPv6. So you have an IPv4 client. This makes IPv6 mostly a low-risk option. If the client doesn't support it, it runs as is, as a dual stack client or as an IPv4 client, and there's no configuration on the client necessary. He automatically does it. So which client does this? Client support. Newer iOS, newer macOS, newer Android, all support this. And newer does not mean bleeding edge. This is device or operating system from the last few years. Still missing is Windows, but Microsoft says they are working on it for Windows 11. And Linux, the code for System D is already uh, finished, but uh, the distributions need to merge it into their operating systems. So depending on the client mix, 40 to 70% already support this. If I look at the devices here, I think that's spot on. The 70%, I don't think that's, that's high. So you can just look this up on uh, Wireshark. You can just filter on that and see how many already do this. Your clients here are doing that. They are sending the HTTP uh, option 108. The server doesn't support it, so he doesn't respond with it, but they are doing it. So infrastructure support, DHCP option 108, every DHCP server supports custom option. If your does not, just throw it away. Uh, NAT64, your router firewall might already support this. If not, then you are in for an upgrade in the next few years anyway. Uh, open source, uh, Joule and uh, Tiger run great. And Pref64, uh, this is the one that is newer. Uh, you re really need bleeding edge stuff. Uh, Cisco has it in 17.11 for the routers. Uh, and uh, RRDVD for open source already has the code, but is not yet released. So you really need newer stuff here, but there's a workaround you can do via DNS if you really want to work with it now, because it works. So how does it look? This is on my iPad. There is an IPv4 address here. Yeah, that's a dummy address that gets set in. The router and the address are both the iPad because the operating system just catches my IPv4 request and translates this. It's the same on my Mac. That's how it looks on the Mac. And if you make IP config on the terminal, you can see I have multiple IPv6 addresses. I have this dummy address. And the NAT64 prefix is also listed here. And I can just type ping 9.9.9.9. .9 and I ping. IPv4, without an IPv4 address. It just works. So caveats, it is still NAT. So everything that sucks with NAT sucks with this too. It's, it's just what it is. Uh, some old clients might not like additional DHCP options. It's the WP3 transition mode all over again. And local traffic is problematic because you don't have an IPv4 address on this network and the other device think you might have. And so there's no way com these never communicate, but who has MDNS on a large network available? Wide-scale testing has been done by WIPE NCC at the conference. They just did the conference network on this, and they did find some issues, uh, reported them to the operating system vendors, and they got fixed. So they are really making good beta testing. Uh, Google has this done in many of their buildings now. Uh, this is the DHCP uh, pool at one of their buildings when they started it. So the DHCP pool basically shrank down 80%, 90%. And I have done some testing uh, with a few people, and I think this is the way to go forward, 
to IPv6 to make IPv4 really legacy, to phase it out and to get rid of it. Thank you.